we have a real treat. Our next guest has achieved something most authors never do. One book that goes number one on the New York Times list. Our next guest has done it five times. And one of my favorite books that he's written is Tuesdays with Maury. But Mitch, thank you for yet another gift for us to read. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. I want to tap into your brain. In this particular book, you've set it in Coldwater, Michigan. How did you pick that? Well, I wanted to set the story in a small town. I live in Michigan. I know a lot of, I grew up in a small town. And I wanted to see what it would be like if a little miracle happened in a little small town way off the way and how the rest of the world would react. So I created this town of Coldwater, Michigan, way up north, where the phones start ringing there one day and it's people calling from heaven. Uh, only it only happens in that little small town and it only happens to a handful of people and the story unfolds as to what happens when word leaks out that in this tiny little dot in the map uh, people are hearing from the afterlife and then the rest of the world starts to converge on this little small town. Well it's certainly an emotionally moving book Mitchell and why did you call it first phone call from heaven? I wanted to uh, explore what would happen if a miracle supposedly actually took place. How would the world react to it? And uh, you know, I've always, I've always noticed how people are attached to voices uh, of their loved ones. I, I know a lot of people who, after somebody dies, they won't erase their voice messages. You know, they won't even touch their answering machine because they want to keep that voice. So I imagine, well, what if you started to hear that voice again? And in this town, as people start kind of you know, uh, scurrying about and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. There's this one guy who lost his wife who isn't getting phone calls and he's got a little seven-year-old son who walks around with a toy phone saying, when's mommy going to call us? And he's convinced it's a hoax and so he sets out to try to prove that it's a hoax and he's kind of doing that on this side as the story's getting bigger and bigger and they kind of converge just before Christmas uh, where they're going to do a live broadcast of a phone call from heaven to the whole world. You know, a big TV show comes in and they got cameras and the internet and everybody's going to find out once and for all if there really is a heaven just when he thinks he's figured out if it's a hoax or not. And so that's sort of the big conclusion, which I'm not going to reveal to you. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly, we're certainly not going to ruin the ending, but Mitch, what is it about your writing that connects with us so emotionally? Well, I thank you for that. Um, I think if I do do that, uh, it's just because I tend to write things that interest me about like what's important in life and what matters in life. Uh, I learned that from Maury Schwartz when I was sitting with him for all those months. We sort of every week we kind of discussed, okay, what really matters when you get to the end? You know, this doesn't matter. You think this matters, but it won't when you get here. And I've always sort of kept those lessons in my head. And in all the books that I've written since Tuesdays with Maury, uh, I probably always explored some theme that he and I talked about that I knew would be uh, important. And it turns out that kind of the things that are important to me about what's meaningful in life, I guess, are also important to other people, and that's why they enjoy my stories. Well, Mitch, I highly recommend this book to our audience. But I want to go back to a book that's touched your life and all of ours. is Tuesdays with Maury. And I'm just curious, did he open up a passion in you that led you to become such a world-renowned writer? Probably. I, I think because up to that point, I was, I was writing. I was writing sports, but I was very ambitious. I mean, the writing was more about, like, how can I succeed? What can I do? How much more can I do? How many more awards can I win? How much uh, better known can I become? And after sort of reconnecting with him and just sitting there watching him die week after week and being reminded of who I used to be when I knew him, I think it sort of hit a lot of breaks for me. And I started to focus on some other things that, that I think are more important. And I think probably there's a lot of people out there who read my books who are or were a lot like me before Maury. And they also are kind of, kind of saying, you know, I'm killing myself. I'm working 20 hours a day and nine days a week, and I still don't feel fulfilled in any way. Why is that? And so I think that that book sort of explores that great question of, you know, what matters to us when we really, really, really realize that we don't have all the time in the world. And that's probably why Tuesdays with Maury is still popular today. Well, Mitch, I just, I just commend you for bringing those philosophical questions to life that challenge us to think, to appreciate life, and 
given your tremendous success, which is well documented, what have you learned on your journey that you can share with the rest of us pursuing our dreams? Well, I can answer that actually as it relates to this book. Uh, uh, you know, my mother, when I was younger, when email was invented, I, I said to her, uh, hey, you should get this email. You know, we can communicate via email. And she said, I'm not going to do that because if I do that, you won't call me anymore. And I want to hear your voice. I don't want some note or some text. And uh, I always thought she was crazy and backwards. And then a few years ago, she had a stroke and lost the ability to speak. And I haven't heard her voice in three plus years. And I miss it terribly. And I think I probably speak for a lot of people who do that. And I think I've come to realize that that human communication that we have with one another, which we're giving away, we just give away as we just sit on our things like this all the time, is really very precious and we ought to hang on to it while we can because it's not very long before all of a sudden you don't have that voice to hear anymore and then you're longing for a phone call again or a conversation again and there's nothing you can do about it. No amount of texting is going to bring it to you. So I probably, you know, that's one lesson that I've certainly learned and I tried to embody and put in this book. Mitch, you certainly touched us with your words of inspiration. Thank you for your gift. i always be grateful for a friend of mine, Laura Hodgson, for giving me the book Tuesdays with Maury. And since then, it's really transformed my life. Thank you for what you do for all of us. Thank you, Con. Appreciate it.